In the previous segment, 6A, we heard about the conciliatory verses and the supposed niceties in Islam. But where do the violent sections come from? Well, Muhammad's migration from Mecca to Medina is the famously called Hijra. Thus begins the second period of the alleged revelations called the Medina period. The Medina became the headquarters of the first organized crime syndicate in history. Muhammad sent piratical raiding parties to slaughter, plunder, rape and enslave so-called unbelieving Arabs, the majority in the Arabian Peninsula. He also attacked the Christian and Judaized Arabs. These attacks were conducted in ambush, without warning and invariably during the holy and forbidden months of the Arabs. To justify any and all of his criminal and unmerciful instructions to assassinate his opponents, to attack innocent and unsuspecting other Arabs, very convenient revelations were descended upon him by Allah through the angel Gabriel, whenever and wherever he needed them, thus sanctifying his actions. It was during the Medina period that the mantra twinning and invariably associating Muhammad with Allah was also revealed. Allah and his messenger, Allah wa Rasulahu. It was also during the second period that almost all of the hate-mongering and warmongering verses of the Quran were descended. The following verse, called the abrogating verse, is the one that explains all the misunderstandings and contradictions that overwhelm and confuse people. Surah Al-Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 106. It says, None of our revelation do we abrogate, ma nansukh, or cause to be forgotten, aw nunsiha, without substituting them with something better or similar. Abrogation, nasikh, means that Muhammad's Allah revealed verses that overruled, overturned, or deleted previous ones. Now let us take what is called the sword or fighting verse, for example, which was revealed in Medina. It overturned or overruled 124 earlier conciliatory verses of the Meccan period. Surah At-Tawbah, chapter 9, verse 5 says, but when the forbidden months are past, then fight and slay the pagans wherever you find them and seize them, beleaguer them and lie in wait for them in every stratagem of war. Ibn Arabi said, the verse of the sword, chapter 9, verse 5, has abrogated 124 verses of the Quran. According to Ibn Kathir, that the verse of the sword abrogated every peace treaty that had been made with the idolaters, that is, the pagan Arabs. Previously, you, the listeners, heard three conciliatory examples from the Meccan period. Now, you will hear the verses which abrogated or overruled them. Take chapter 2, verse 256, which said, Let there be no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. This was abrogated by verse by chapter 3, verse 85, which says, If anyone desires a religion other than Islam, that is submission to Allah, never will it be accepted of him. Then we go to chapter 109, verse 6, which says, To you, your religion, and to me, my religion. Now look at chapter 61, verse 9, which says, It is he who has sent his apostle with guidance, and the religion of truth, that is Islam, that he may proclaim it over all religion, even though the pagans may detest it. We go to the third verse, which is chapter 15, verse 42. Allah is our Lord and your Lord. Unto us our works and unto you your works, and so on. And look at chapter 9, verse 29, which says, Fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden, which has been forbidden by Allah and his apostle, nor acknowledge the religion of truth, even if they are of the people of the book, that is the Jews and the Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves humiliated. These three examples are but a few 
of the hundreds of abrogating and abrogated verses in the Quran that constitute the core beliefs that have to be followed by fundamentalist Muhammadan Muslims.